Hey there, I am back with another deck review, and today we're going to be looking at Mechanimals from Celsius Pictor. Now, Celsius is an artist out of Spain uh, who calls his style a little bit of a collage. He borrows on a bunch of different inspirations, most notably the engraving style with its intricate designs carved into wood and then pressed onto paper, uh, as well as uh, artistic drawings from scientists like Charles Darwin, who would sketch animals as part of his studies, or even elements of the mechanical wonders of the Industrial Revolution. And he combines all these inspirations into a truly unique style uh, that he brings to life in his artwork. Uh, and that is the style that he used as the inspiration for Mechanimals. Now, this is actually the first deck from Celsius Pictor, and with the quality of it, was incredibly impressed. Uh, and when I first heard about the deck, I thought, okay, animals and mech elements to it. I've kind of seen that kind of idea before. But as I delved into the deck, found out that this was much richer in story and lore than I ever could have imagined. So very excited to get into this one and show you guys a little bit more of Mechanimals. So let's get right into it. All right, starting with the tuck box. This is a two-part construction. You have the main tuck box and then this sleeve that slides off here and kind of covers part of the tuck box. It's a beautifully done sleeve uh, with elements of foil. You can see that kind of rose gold foil as well as the light blue, that pale blue foil here at the bottom. Beautiful mixture, the embossing on here giving you a little bit of extra texture and some beautiful artwork right off the bat giving you a quick look at Celsius's style. Uh, this one features an animal here in the center, but that animal combined with the mechanical elements, exactly like you'd expect with the Mechanimals name. You can see the armor here has elements of gears and other little metal pieces uh, that give it that really complex and intricate look. And then the engraving style really heavily used on the animal itself. The individual uh, pieces of fur all kind of coming to life, each of them with their own flow. There's this great natural look to it overall. Not sure what kind of animal this is, almost looks like a fox or a badger, kind of a mixture of the two. Uh, but beautifully done, the accents of foil done just right to be uh, enhancing the, the image without being too distracting. Just really nicely done. And then just Mechanimals playing cards there in the banner in the center. The bottom part here has kind of a flatter foil with a bit of a wallpaper pattern on it. It continues all the way around, little elements of filigree, just giving some extra detail but a nice look to the overall sleeve of this one, which cleanly slides off to reveal the tuck underneath. And the artwork doesn't stop with the sleeve. We get more beautiful artwork on this one. So the front of the tuck box features this uh, almost like a cityscape scene that brings in all of the different time eras that were used to inspire the deck. You can see the Roman or the Renaissance or even medieval era's influence with the castles there. And then the metallic structure here in the center, bringing to mind the Industrial Revolution again. Beautiful scene in the center, Mechanimals playing cards again written there. And then a little bit more white space on the tuck box here, which is why I think the sleeve really serves well to kind of give some balance to this one. Because I think just the tuck box, a little bit too much white space. But beautiful artwork in the center. Celsius Pictor mentioned on both sides as the designer. The bottom here just mentions these are printed by the Legends Playing Card Company. Top has just a little extra design element there. And the back, not the back design of the cards, but designed to look a lot like a coat of arms. This one, a, uh, a completely freshly designed coat of arms. Again, bringing in those Renaissance vibes with the coat of arms itself, the crown, the wings on the side, but then adding some of the gears and things like that that bring in that Industrial Revolution feel as well. Beautiful little details and bordering around this one. And of course mentions this was a limited edition deck that was printed in 2022. So very nice look to that one. Opening up the inner flap here, it says together we stand, divided we fall. And then the actual almost Florida de lis looking symbols here on the interior flaps. Interior printing as well features a fantastic scene. It's a little bit hard to see all of it here, but a tall Renaissance castle reaching up to the skies, skies with that glowing blue star. It's a great scene that you'd have to unfold the entire tuck to really appreciate, but some nice little extra detail and a nice pleasant surprise to open up the tuck and get a peek at that. But anyway, that is the tuck box. Really well done, but let's get into the cards. 
and we'll start with the back design. Now, frankly, this is probably my least favorite part of the entire deck. I think the back design, there's a lot of nice elements, a lot of really detailed artwork on this one, but I don't love that kind of cross hatching pattern that forms the bulk of the background. I think it's a little bit too much empty space and it kind of breaks up the overall focus of the back design. That said, the beautiful artwork is there as well. Uh, and this one's inspired by Arab architecture, Arabs in the area of Spain to be specific. Uh, and so you can kind of see this uh, almost like a pool of water here in the center and then a red barrier surrounding it, the little pops of blue and red color, some of the very few pops on an otherwise black and white design. And then you can see these four hawks that are standing guard in the four corners, the pikes over their shoulders. It's a great look to it overall. And then the arches in here are bringing those elements of Arab architecture into the design. I love the artwork on that piece. Like I said, if you just filled in some of this blank space with something other than the cross hatching, I think it would, it would have been a really beautiful back design of the cards. And then finishes out with that nice border and the thin white poker border to close it out. All right, so there's your back design. And then we get into the cards themselves. You get a pair of jokers. And these are a pair of minstrels that you might see from the era. Uh, again, beautifully done in the style of animals as well. Uh, and just a really cool look to them overall. Again, using that engraving art style and you can see the level of detail that he puts in the artwork, just really nicely done. So you have the uh, rabbit here playing, I guess that would be like the bagpipes. And then this one, some kind of stringed instrument, not sure what that is. It's a really bizarre looking animal. That might be some kind of completely fictional stringed instrument. Love the little pop of red with the backgrounds on these. Just a nice little extra hit of color and then just Joker Joker in the corners. There's your two jokers. Uh, you get four ornate aces on this one, but the power ace is the ace of spades, if only for the uh, extra text here at the bottom. And once again, a lot of use of the Industrial Revolution themes throughout this one. The gears and the mixture of mechanical elements really kind of giving that full metallic feel to the spade pip itself. And then you get the pair of powerful animals here in the center, the lion on one side and the eagle on the other. Really beautiful design on this one, and that engraving style works incredibly well. Follows that up with a fairly standard Pippin Index here in the corner. So trying to keep, despite all the customization in the deck, something that's still fairly usable by keeping that really nice legible Pippin Index in the corner. The other aces all follow suit, no pun intended, uh, with intricate detailed drawings that again borrow heavily on the industrial themes. Uh, the red cards do bring in nice little hits of red. Ace of Diamonds, probably my least favorite of the bunch, but I do really like the Ace of Clubs here with the valves at the bottom. Uh, just a nice little uh, use of the three leaves of the clover, if you will. And then another favorite, the Ace of Hearts. This one designed to look like this really complex series of gears and chains, almost like this would be a, an actual mechanical version of a human heart. So very cool look to the Ace of Hearts. So there's your four aces. All of the number cards feature custom pips as well. And again, nice little embellishments on these, nice large pips here on the two. Uh, and you can see just some little extra details that give that mechanical vibe to them. Now, an interesting decision as you go through on this one, you'll see the size of the pips change. So the two and the three, large pips, and then suddenly we go to slightly smaller pips as we go to the four and beyond. And I imagine that's mostly a space thing, but I really would have preferred the pips all been the same size through the deck. It's a little bit distracting but nothing too bad with the artwork on this one. So back to Jumbo Pip for the two on this one. There's your look at the Diamonds Pips, and then we go back smaller for the three and three and, and beyond. So just the two on this one had the uh, larger pips. And then into the club, so there's your uh, super-sized pips on the two and on the three. And then down to the smaller pips there. I like the circular elements on the clubs again. And then finally, the hearts with that mechanical mechanism there in the center and this sort of carapace style style shell around the edges kind of a cool mixture on that one so there are your heart pips and then we get into the quartz and this is for me the real highlight of the deck the spot where celsius's artwork can really come to life and it is fantastic now the inspiration for these quartz are the old decks that you'd find in Fr uh, like French decks from, I don't think like the 1500s or 1600s. And in that time, most of the time, the quartz in the deck were used to depict famous characters, famous characters from history, from the Bible, famous rulers and things like that. Uh, and so each card would actually have 
a name, a character that was associated with that. And so Celsius decided to use that as the inspiration. So the cards that you see here are all inspired by some of those rulers that were used to inspire the French decks back in the day. But of course, they're given his own twist, bringing in the mechanical elements and the animal elements that you would expect from the Mechanimals deck. So let's go through who some of these characters are because I think it's a fascinating cast. Great to kind of get some of the lore and the inspiration that went into them. And we start off here with the Jack of Spades. This is Ogier the Dane. Ogier was a companion of Charlemagne who was the ruler of the Holy Roman Empire. And so this was one of his fiercer warriors here with that long thin sword. And I love the depiction here as a rabbit with the glasses perched on his nose. And then that armor there kind of bring in those industrial vibes as well. Beautifully illustrated overall. I will say my only knock on this one is I wish could have kind of zoomed in on the artwork. There's a lot of empty space here. And I think this could have been made larger, given a chance to just appreciate some of those fantastic details anymore. But nonetheless, a beautifully illustrated card. So next up is the Queen of Spades, one of my favorite characters that was chosen. This is Athena, the Greek goddess of wisdom. Now she's often uh, associated with the owl and so very fitting that the owl, a symbol of wisdom, be uh, her animal choice for the deck. As you can see the owl head there, the flower in her hands, and even a shoulder element here that kind of resembles a Greek column, just a nice little touch. And then that long staff in her hands rather than a traditional weapon. Beautiful look to this one. And like I said, one of my favorite cards in the deck. Uh, but. My favorite card in the deck has got to be this one, the King of Spades. This one's inspired by King David, who was known as the Lion of Judah from the Bible. Uh, he's actually depicted here with a harp in his hands and fittingly as a lion befitting his name. Uh, the harp here has significance because King David was said to have uh, been the author of the Psalms, a series of songs uh, that are included as part of the Old Testament. And so pictured here with a harp to give a tie to his work with Psalms. So very cool look to it. I love the determined stare that the king has there. Uh, the crown on his head, just a great card overall. Then we go to the Jack of Diamonds and we're gonna stick with uh, Greco-Roman mythology for the story of Hector. Hector was one of the heroes of the Trojan War. In fact, he was the Trojans' strongest warrior of all, according to the legends. Uh, so you can see him here depicted with his toga. Uh, his armor there definitely brings in some of those gears and mechanical vibes and looking incredibly strong with that crude axe off to his side, almost like he's ready to go off to war. Another great inspiration for a card and a beautifully illustrated piece. Next up is the Queen of Diamonds and we'll return to the Bible, this time for Rachel, who was the second wife of Jacob. Uh, she actually birthed two sons who would become two of the 12 tribes of Israel. Uh, and so very significant character within biblical lore uh, and depicted here as a tigress. And I love the look on her face. Somehow this one I think does a great job of capturing her kind of motherly significance. Uh, she has that nurturing, but still fierce and determined look in her eyes. Uh, just a really great look. And then the classic flower, just like you'd find on a classic uh, Queen of Diamonds cards there in her hands. All right, then we go to the King of Diamonds. And this is probably the most famous character from the deck. This is Julius Caesar depicted as a Roman eagle. Julius Caesar was uh, probably the most famous of the uh, Roman emperors and was also notably betrayed by the senators. The senators actually tricked him, betrayed him, and stabbed him to death on the steps of the Senate. Significant moment in history. And I like to think here, you can see the ax is behind Caesar, not in his hand at all. I like to think that ax is kind of a symbol of the betrayal, the uh, weapons at his back that ultimately caused his death. But another great story behind this one with the Queen of Diamonds and Julius Caesar. All right, so next up we get to the Jack of Clubs and this is Sir Lancelot. Uh, Lancelot was the favored knight of King Arthur from the Arthurian legends. Uh, he was said to be the smartest, boldest warrior and one of the most cunning and so depicted here as a fox uh, ready to go to war. Beautifully uh, ornate axe here in his hands. I love the curves on this one. And again, kind of bringing in just a couple of little gears and elements that kind of keep that industrial feel mixed in with the Renaissance vibe. So there is Sir Lancelot. Next up is the Queen of Clubs. It's the only one that's not 
a specifically named character or a specifically named character from history, I guess you should say. Uh, usually you hear this one referred to as Argene. Uh, Argene is just an anagram of the word Regina, which is Latin for queen. So you can kind of think of this as more of a generic queen character. This one has a much more delicate feel to it overall, much thinner body here, the uh, feather in her hands with that long flowing look and depicted as a doe here in the center. I love this one, but this is probably the one that most would have benefited from just being larger uh, to see some of those details. I love the little gear work in here, but it's really hard to make out on the card with it this size. All right, so last of the clubs, we come to the queen, the king of clubs. This uh, horse here is Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great was one of the great conquerors of the ancient world, had an enormous empire. And according to legend, he had a legendary horse as well. I'm probably going to butcher the pronunciation, but I believe the name is Buchefalas. Uh, Buchefalas was his horse uh, through legend. According to the stories, Alexander and Buchefalas were born at the exact same time, died at the exact same time. That's how in sync and tied together they were. And so Alexander being depicted as a horse, a nice fitting look. And I love the addition of the scepter and the orb in his hands, kind of symbols of his office and leadership over the empire. So another great card there. All right, so then we get to the final suit with the hearts and we start off with the Jack of Hearts. And this is Etienne de Vignoles, uh, who is a warrior and companion of the famed Joan of Arc, the martyress herself. Uh, he was said to be an incredibly fierce warrior uh, and her closest companion or one of her closest companions. He's got the axe, another very ornate axe strapped to, her back, to his back, and then the uh, leaf here in his hands. Uh, that leaf is something you'll see in uh, classic playing cards as well today. Bicycle playing cards always show that kind of feather or leaf in the hand of the Jack of Hearts. Interesting story on that one. That's actually a bastardization of the original card. So, so those of the original cards, the Jack of Hearts actually had a sword. It was a sword that was pointing down, kind of going this way. Uh, and the hilt of the sword uh, was, was kind of in the shape of a leaf or it looked like a leaf. But over time, as these engravings were done over and over again and copied over and over again, the sword portion kind of got lost. Uh, call it a mistake of the engraving. And so all that was left was that hilt that resembled a leaf. And so today we only see the leaf in the hands. And so this card kind of pays tribute to the mistake, I guess you would say, from the engravers. So two quarts to go. Come here with a B of all things. And this B represents Judith, uh, who is a Jewish heroine. Uh, there's famous paintings of this, but it was said there was a, a general who was going to engage, uh, invade her homeland by the name of Hollow Furnace. Uh, and it was Judith who saved her people by ultimately beheading him, uh, killing him and kind of thwarting the entire invasion. And so because of that, she's a significant heroine and may, uh, finds her way onto the Queen of Hearts as a bee. All right, and last but not least, we have the King of Hearts. This is Charlemagne, the founder of the Holy Roman Empire. Again, one of the most significant rulers of all time. The Holy Roman Empire was one of the, most, uh, one of the largest and most significant empires in history. And so depicted here beautifully on the King of Hearts. Again, fantastic artwork, animal and mechanized pieces kind of brought together to form a beautiful piece of art. And that is the deck. So not a perfect deck. I think there's a few kind of flaws in terms of function on this one. Back design, I'm not crazy about. Size of the pips, you know, I, I think the consistency there could have been better. And, you know, maybe making the uh, characters on the cards a little bit larger. But those nitpicks aside, I think the artwork makes this one incredibly worth owning. It's a beautiful deck from start to finish. And the artwork is absolutely amazing. Uh, these are uh, printed by Legends Playing Cards. And so if you're used to like USBCC or Card of Mundi, these won't be quite as soft, a little bit stiffer of a feel to them, but still some really nice handling overall. So if you want to use this deck, it's not going to be a bad deck for handling in any way whatsoever. Now there is, if you're interested, a second version of the deck. It looks very similar. This is the gilded version of the deck. These are numbered to just 600. Only differences on these other than... Uh, other than the gilding we'll look at in a second, the only other difference is the tuck seal that's included here. That tuck seal, again, features some beautiful artwork on it, numbered out of the 600 deck edition. And then as you open up, you can see the fantastic color choice for the gilding. We've seen some of these blues throughout the deck. And so this one uses that ice blue color for the gilding on these. 
a beautiful and striking color. I think it goes great. Just sort of plays off of that blue in the center there of the back design. So great color choice on this one for the gilding. But otherwise, card faces, card backs, all that are just the same on the gilded version of the deck. So no differences whatsoever. But anyway, that is it. That is the look at Mechanimals from Celsius Pictor. If you're interested in picking these up, there are some available on its website. So I'll put a link down in the description where you can pick up some of these for yourself and get your hands on one of, I think, the best decks for 2022 and certainly one of the best rookie decks that I've ever seen. So kudos to Celsius for these. Can't wait to see if there's a second deck in the works. But for now, enjoy Mechanimals. Uh, anyway, that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure to subscribe for more deck reviews, more unboxings. Let me know what else you want to see, and I'll see you for the next one.